Hi, this is Wallace from Capturing Reality. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a 3D model of this speaker using Reality Capture and the PPI or Paper Input Licensing model. So you will learn the basic principles of photogrammetry, how to make a model and roughly how much it's going to cost you. I'm going to be making the complete model, including the bottom, by combining two captures. Every good model starts with good inputs. Reality Capture will take a huge different range of photos as inputs, everything from medium format to simply using your mobile phone. For this project, I'm going to go somewhere in the middle by using a small compact camera. I'm going to use it on the JPEG setting at the highest resolution of 20 megapixels. If you're just starting out in photogrammetry, try to avoid scanning shiny objects or anything that won't stay still. What you're trying to achieve when taking your photos for reality capture is sharp, low noise, evenly exposed photos. So if you're a creative photographer with a passion for high contrast, super grainy, shallow depth of field photos, this would be a good time to rein in some of that creativity. Try to avoid direct sunlight. Digital cameras just don't have enough dynamic range to get the detail you need in both the shadows and the highlights. Overcast weather is great for photogrammetry. It's also important to remember not to pivot from the same position. Reality Capture needs to gather 3D information. So if you take two photos from the same position, you're not giving the software any extra 3D information. It's the same as having one big photo taken from that position. Try to remember that if you were a cyclops, you wouldn't have 3D vision. People often pivot when capturing trees and buildings because the subject does not fit into a single shot. But even in this situation, it's always good to move a bit. For this model, I'm going to capture one side of the object, then flip it, and then capture the other side. We need to be conscious of this when taking the photos. I'm going to start by doing a loop, and it's important to get low so that the software can easily match the sides of the object when it gets flipped. On this loop, try to get the photos roughly every 10 degrees, so about 36 picks on the full loop. It may take a few tries to get a feel for doing this. Then it's time to get the upwards facing side. You can either do some more loops at different heights or shoot arches over the top. I'm going to shoot two arches that cross at right angles in the middle and then another two going from corner to corner, making a total of four equidistant arches. And here we are in Reality Capture. And if it's the first time you've opened Reality Capture, the first thing you will see is this large help screen. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that. I'm going to go to the top left hand corner and under these layout options, I'm going to select a one plus one layout. I'm going to change this 2DS to a 1DS by clicking and holding, going down to 1DS and releasing. And the same method to change this 2D to a 3DS. Now I'm going to get my images into Reality Capture by going to the workflow tab and under Add Imagery, I'm going to click Input. And what I've done is I separated my captures of either side of the object into two folders, side one and side two, and we're going to start on side one. And I'm going to select the first image and then Control A to select all and open. And 94 images have come in. The first thing to do is align them. So go to the Alignment tab and under Registration, click Align Images. There's the alignment. If I right click in this 3DS view, you can rotate, left click, move left and right, left click and up and down, zooms in and out, as does the mouse wheel. And if I hold down Control and left click, I can move directly up and down on the Z axis or left and right. These of my camera positions and these are the tie points between all the images creating a sparse point cloud and I can roughly see my object there. This box here is the reconstruction region. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these handles and move it tighter around my object so I'm not unnecessarily reconstructing a load of stuff that I do not need. So let's just tighten that up a bit. That looks good enough. What we're doing right now is we are going to create some masks and we're going to use a model to create those masks but we just need a really rough model so i'm going to go to mesh model here 
and under create model we're going to use a preview model and that just uses the sparse point cloud to make a really fast model you'll see in a second i'm going to show you this in real time that was in real time so there you go very very fast meshing but we need to get rid of everything that isn't the actual object to make the masks effective so what i'm going to do is you click on this 3ds view and it will be surrounded with this blue border and then under scene 3d click on tools you get a whole load of tool options and under mesh model here is the lasso tool i'm going to select that and it works just like lasso in any other software you click and hold and then drag around the area that you want to select i'm going to select all of those Everything behind will also be selected. I'm going to rotate around. And now if I hold down control, you can see a little plus appears. And that means it's going to add to my selection. Rotate again. I'm just going to do this the whole way around. And everything orange is what is selected. I'm also going to select this little cable here. Okay, there we go, that's a good enough selection. Now, when you wanna get rid of the, everything that you've highlighted in orange, what you do is you go up to Mesh Model and Filter Selection, which basically means delete. So that's got rid of all those triangles I don't want. And this is a good enough model to make my masks with. So, same again, you wanna have this 3DS highlighted with the blue border and then Three, scene 3D, tools, and then in the export section, you can see depth and mask. So click on that. And you want to export them to the same folder they're in. Um, this way they can be imported as layers. So this is side one again. I click OK. Now the default is to also export camera depths, but we do not need that. We just need masks. So I'm going to change that to no, I do not want camera depths and leave everything else on the default settings and OK. Because we're in PPI, every time you do an export, you need to have all your inputs licensed. So I have previously set up a pin on the Capturing Reality website. So I'm just gonna put in my pin and confirm payment. And that's all of the masks exported. So I don't actually need this project anymore because the only purpose of it was to create my masks. So I'm going to go to File, New, Do Not Save. And I'm going to go through the exact same process on the other side. Inputs, this time I'm going to go to Side 2. Select the first one, Control A. And align those ones. And for some reason it's on its side, but that's not an issue. Actually, I'm just gonna quickly show you how to put it the right way up. So same 3DS with a blue border around it, i.e. just click on it, go to tools and go to set ground plane in under scene alignment. And then this little, little widget appears. And I'm gonna grab that handle, just turn it over. It doesn't need to be perfect, but um, that's fine. Just makes it a little bit easier to work with. So now if I click on the corner of the reconstruction region, the little handles appear again. So just click anywhere on the white frame and it will uh, you'll get your handles back if they've disappeared for some reason. And see, it's remembered that I do not want the camera depth, so that's that's all ready to go. And this side is going to cost one dollar and forty cents. Again, I'm going to put in my pin that I set up on the website, and confirm payment. Here is a new project, and I'm going to show you another way to get your images into Reality Capture. Here's my two folders, side one and side two. It's going to double click on side one and show you there's the masks next to the images and they are formatted in such a way that when you drag and drop this fold, either folder into reality capture 
the mask will be added as a layer and not an extra image. So I'm going to highlight one and two, drag them in. And there you go, 206 images. I'm just going to turn this 3DS into a 2D and then you can inspect the images themselves. Now, if I click on this 2D, so it's got a blue border around it, then I press tab. Now you can see the mask. Now everything that's gone dark here is going to be masked out. And the way this is going to work, and the reason we've been doing these masks, is that if the alignment ignores everything in the background, it can then join the top and bottom halves together. So I'm going to change this back to a 3DS and I'm going to go to the alignment tab and hit align. And there we go, we've got a great alignment there. We've got 202 out of 206, there's four we're missing, uh, but that's looking pretty good to me. Now, one thing I wanted to show you was when we did the, those exports of exporting the masks, um, it asked us to pay. So a lot of people get confused and think that, that means that you're paying for the export. But what you're actually paying for is to license the inputs. And when your inputs are licensed, you can see these little L's next to each image. And that means actually that you can make any export you like, so long as all of the images in your project are licensed. So I can simplify this, export simplified model, export renders, whatever you want to do, you basically have complete freedom once all of your images are licensed. So now I'm going to just rotate this reconstruction region so it lines up with the object. And this time we're going to go to mesh model and instead of doing a preview model, we're going to do a normal detail model. And there we go, it's finished reconstructing and looking pretty good. And the next thing I'm going to do is texture it. So the default texture is a single 8K texture. Um, if you want a more detailed texture, you can change, you can do a new unwrap and change the unwrap parameters here. For instance, the 16K texture. That's if you're set to maximum texture count. If you want the best, best texture you can get, um, you are better off using fixed text, texel size and leaving it on optimal and probably 8K textures are more generally useful. But I'm actually going to leave it at the default and I'm just going to hit the texture button up here. Here is the final textured model. Looks pretty good cut those cables off. This whole model cost $2.58 and because all the inputs are now licensed you can make as many exports as you like, simplify it, anything you want um, with this model from this point on. I downscaled the images down to 5 megapixels and then I did exactly the same process with those images and this model costs just 62 cents. So you can make a huge saving by downscaling the images or using just slightly less resolution. Obviously you can also do this on the camera. So if you just did the whole capture on a lower setting, um, you can just save money like that because you pay per megapixel in PPI. The other thing I wanted to mention is that there is a way of automating this whole process using CLI. And if you're interested in, in learning how to do that, then just leave a comment below this video and I'll make another video showing how to write the script that would do all of this automatically. All you'd have to do is just place your images in folders, side one and side two, and the script will do the rest. Thanks very much and goodbye.